All you need to do is first of all, separate the person from the background. You can do this by getting yourself the object selection tool. Left click on the person to get yourself a selection. We can correct it by getting ourselves the quick selection tool using plus to add and then holding Alt or Option key to take it away. So we want to deselect these areas and then bring back this bit at the bottom. Go to Select and Mask at the top. In here, we're going to refine the hair using the second tool down, which is the Edge Refinement tool. You want to set yourself the brush to something like 100 and then just refine the hair so it looks a lot better. Once you're happy with the results, you can then go all the way down to the bottom, go to Output Tool and set it to a new layer with Layer Mask and press OK. Now that you've got yourself the person separated from the background, you want to bring back your background and you want to select your background. You want to go to Filter, go down to Neural Filters. In here, you want to go all the way down and you will see a Creative tab. In here, you want to first of all, get yourself the Backdrop Creator downloaded on your computer. Once you've got it installed and downloaded, you can enable this feature and this will give you a text box, which is called Prompt. And all you need to do is simply type in whatever you want the background to look like. So for example, if I want a smooth purple background, we can just type in here. We can select ourselves a variety and then press create. And what this will do is it will use AI to generate free unique backdrops. These are completely random. And every time you generate a new one, it will be completely different. As you can see, we have now got ourselves three unique backdrops. We can select through here. And if we're not happy with the results, we can add ourselves a wider variety. We can put it all the way up to 100 and then press create again. And what this will do is it will dive deeper and get ourselves three more backdrops. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can select whichever one that you want to use. So for example, if you're happy with this one, you can select it. And if you're not happy with, let's say, the one that's more of a blue color, you can just close this down and delete it from the preview. Same goes for these two as well. You can remove them and you can select yourself multiple ones if you wanted to. So for example, if you also wanted this one, you just left click on here and this will then add it to the collection. Now, another cool thing about this feature is if you scroll to the top, you will also see a popular preset button at the top. If you left click in here, this will bring up the popular prompts. So for example, let's say that you really like this 80s glitch neon, you can click on create. And what this will do is it will also create yourself a similar style to this example right here. Some of them may look a little bit odd, but some of them may look decent. You also have the project gallery, which has a bunch of other ones that have been created by other creators. So let's say, for example, you wanted to use this glitch looking one, you can click on open and you can get yourself this one as well if you wanted to. So then once you're happy with your presets, you can then close this down, scroll all the way down to the bottom, set it to a new layer group and then press OK. And what this will do is it will create a folder with the chosen backdrops. You can turn it off or switch to the other one. You can even mix and match them together if you want to, just by lowering the opacity. And if you'd like to see all the new features that have been added, click on the screen to watch the next video.